Tonight on Border Security International. You had some problems with law enforcement? Oh, yeah. I'm on probation. You can smell a lot of chemicals in it. Looks like to be something inside. You open this bag, lime green rope huh? with that key, but it's not your bag. Toronto's Pearson International Airport is the busiest in the country. Every year, more than 11 million travellers touch down from international destinations. And border services officers are the first to greet them. Do you have a permanent resident card? How long have you been outside of Canada? Today, officers are interested in a Canadian resident returning home after an extensive tour of South Asia. So you've been in India for how many days in total? Yeah, India. Almost two months. And then four days in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Okay. He's coming from the region of the world that heroin is typically manufactured and grown. So it piques the interest, and we just want to have a look at this stuff. These are all your bags? Yeah, that's my own. And you've packed them all yourself? Yes, I did. You're aware of the contents of all your pieces of luggage? Yeah, I know. Okay. What's in here? This is not my bag. As we open the bag up, it says, wait, that's not my bag. That's not your bag? Not my bag. But I'm confused now, Siva, because... Yeah. I mean, it's got green rope on it. Yeah. The chances of another bag being blue with green rope on it are, are very slim to none. Across the country, a flight from California arrives in Vancouver. What brings you to Canada? I've never been out of the country, and I'm just excited to be here, and just okay. to have fun. And the, the main reason why I'm here is a vacation. Chandler's coming up from Los Angeles today. He said he's going to come up to visit some friends. He basically come up here to hang out and have a good time. These are your bags? Yeah, where what's inside the bags? Yes. How much money do you have with you today? I think there's 2 or $3 in there. What's the uh, amount of funds you have access to? Uh, about $111. You've already paid for your return ticket, is that right? Yes. Okay, what's in this one here besides your clothing? Um, there are two tripods, two photography lights, two soft boxes, okay. um, the, the power pack. He's stated that he's a photographer. I'm seeing that he's bringing up all of his camera gear. It's not usual for somebody to come up here on vacation with a large duffel bag full of uh, professional camera gear. And what are you going to be doing up here specifically? Uh, shooting a few model friends of mine. And how much are they paying you to come up and do this? Every day, thousands of visitors come to the border with specific travel plans. And then there are those who end up there by accident. They don't read the sign, they just show up at the border, and uh, it happens every day, multiple times a day. What happened today in the morning? I was completely confused. Okay. I'm not from this area. Where do you actually live? I live in Tacoma. Oh, okay. I am so not from here. She was out for a joyride, smoked a couple of marijuana joints, and got lost and showed up at the border. When the officer at the booth asked her if she had any drugs in the vehicle, she said, yeah, of course, I have some marijuana. Considering the incident happened today at 8 o'clock in the morning, she got a 24-hour suspension. She's not able to operate a motor vehicle for almost another 12 hours. So two friends from the US have come to drive her and her car back home. And now they're subject to examination. People come in for an examination would like to run them to see if there's any warrants or any issues outstanding with the law. Just want to ask you a couple questions. She texted us, so we came up here to get her car, and we was going to go back. You guys are at the port of entry, so you are subject to examination, OK? All your belongings are subject to examination, OK? okay. You, know. you had some problems with law enforcement before? Oh, yeah. I'm on probation, so. OK. Yeah. Is it for the DUI, or? Yeah. DUI. OK. Empty your pockets for me. Do me a favor, just take your hoodie right off and just put it on the counter right here. OK, in the other pocket, please. Alpha. Inside out? Yeah. Lift one pant leg at a time. I just want to see the tops of yourself. Perfect. And the other one? So I know he's been doing a bit of drinking today, because I can smell the oil liquor on it. We're going to have a quick look in the vehicle. Like, I'm almost thinking they were drinking on the way up, because I can smell all falling in. Really? Yeah. yeah. 
Border Services officers screen all classes of international mail, both in and outbound. I'm going to take this big one. Today, a suspicious package from Toronto has been intercepted. This has got a bit of a smell. You can smell a lot of chemicals in it. A lot of narcotics are cut with harsh chemicals, acetone, rat poison, gasoline. There's a lot of things that are used. The declaration says ceremonial items to wear. The package is full of spools of thread, but there doesn't seem to be any contraband. The spools itself are a concern. I think maybe we should go check this out with the x-ray. spools should be more hollow. It shouldn't have what looks like to be something inside the rolls. This US traveler has arrived at the border impaired. She got a 24-hour suspension. Now her American friends have driven from Seattle to take both the woman and her impounded car home. You had some problems with law enforcement before? Oh, yeah. I'm on probation. Officers think he may be impaired too. Like I'm almost thinking they were drinking on the way up because I can smell alcohol in here. Really? Yeah. Maybe there's some drugs and paraphernalia or anything in the vehicle that would give us some concern. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, they're not big enough for a 22 or anything. We found uh, targets in the back of the vehicle, in the trunk of the vehicle. Um, so obviously, they've done a little bit of target shooting. Due to the circumstances and conditions on this guy's probation, he was not allowed to have possession of firearms. Can you just come over here for a second? Yeah. I'm yeah. just wondering why you have these pictures in the phone. This American photographer admits he's going to take pictures of a friend while vacationing in Vancouver. How much are they paying you to come up and do this work? Uh, I'm treating my friend for free. And she's not paying you anything to come up and do this? No. What's this here? Uh, just notes from other people who I might possibly meet up with. A, a few of the people who are going to pay me, but my friend, like I said, is I'm not charging okay. her who I'm staying with. But... So let's back up here, OK? okay. You're here for six days, is that right? Yes. OK. This looks like you're doing some work at the studio address, is that right? Uh, no, that fell through. OK, so what's this on the 23rd? Joni deposit, Amanda, Jen deposit, Sarah deposit, Shannon deposit. Th those are the, the, the paid ones that I have. OK. But then, like I said, the like, well, like I was, ha how I had answered you earlier was yep. the person I'm staying with. I'm not charging her. OK. Them. But it looks like you're charging other people, other too. Other people, yes. OK. Yes. How much are you getting paid from all these other people to do this? Um, only $100 each, and I think there's six of them. OK. So these people, they're aspiring models in, in Vancouver, is exactly. that correct? Exactly. So you have all your paperwork in order, then, to apply for a work permit? In Toronto, a Canadian resident returning from South Asia claims the bag he picked up off the luggage carousel isn't his. The chances of another bag being blue with green rope on it are very slim to none. Is he hiding something? Or is this simply a baggage blunder? The same color my bag and, and the same green color in it. That's awfully coincidental. Yeah. But I'm, I'm very, I'm perplexed. So I cut all the rope off of somebody's bag, and it's not their bag, right? And I had said, are these your bags? And you said, yes. And I said, did you pack yeah, them yourself? And you said, that's, that's, yes, but see, it's so I, weird. Right? I open it. it so you open this bag yeah. with that key. Yeah, that key. And it's lime green rope on a blue bag, but it's not your bag. It's not my bag. Weird, eh? We're going to go out to the baggage hall, and we're going to find your bag. Another blue bag with green rope and the same key? Seems very unlikely. The Pacific Highway border crossing is a designated port of entry for hundreds of large trucks and their cargo. Today, officers are interested in a truck bound for Vancouver Island. My team and I just spotted a truck uh, in the line. 
flat deck trailers, normally, especially in these kind of weather conditions, they are tarp. So it's hard to take a look at to see what the actual goods are. Where's the load coming from? Where's it going to? Came from uh, Salt Lake City okay. and going to Victoria, BC. What is the nature of the, of the goods? It's uh, cable trays for uh, naval base where they run cables up and roofs and stuff like okay. that. Okay. So. And is it all, all one consignee? Yeah. And who did the tarping? <laughs> you did? Is there anything sharp or dangerous inside the cab we should be aware of? No needles, animals, nothing like well, that? Well, Biff. He's not dangerous. <laughs> who, who's Biff? My Yorkie. <laughs> oh, okay, so we, we will actually, before we get started, we will get you to take Biff yeah. out of the truck. Have you ever had any problems coming to Canada before? No. Never any problems with immigration and customs? Have you ever been arrested? No. Ever been arrested in the States for anything? Awesome. Okay, you want to just pop back, pop back inside. Primarily, we're looking for any kind of contraband or discrepancy with uh, the declaration. Get it on the other side, you can see it. In terms of the truck, it was very unusual. Uh, the trailer itself had a number of modifications, one in actually the belly of the trailer that probably could have fit up to four people inside. All goes all the way back down. Well. Oh! Yeah. At Vancouver International Airport, a photographer from California admits he's planning to work in Canada without a permit. We found the actual written contracts that he is coming here. He's going to get paid, and there's some money that's already been paid up front for the work that's going to be done. So you have all your paperwork in order then to apply for a work permit? No, I, I don't. You understand that you require a work permit to do this kind of work, is that correct? I am not aware of that, no. I thought it was if I made a, a certain amount of money, then I would have to have a permit for it. I, I, I didn't know if it, I didn't think it was any money at all, no. Yeah, so you require a work permit to do this kind of work here. Okay. Okay. Because you don't have that paperwork with you today, uh, I'm not going to allow you entry to Canada. Okay. Okay. So you're going to be going back to the USA for coming here to work without a work permit. Okay. Okay. There are no return flights this evening, so the officer is left with two choices. The first option is we detain the subject, okay? Basically, they go down to a holding center downstairs and they're detained until they go out on their flight, whenever that may be. Second option to us is allow you to temporarily enter Canada as long as you are going to be reporting back to us tomorrow to leave. I'm going to go with option number two, which is allow you to go into Canada, find a hotel to sleep in. I have no reason to detain you. You've been open and honest with me, OK? We chose to go the least severe route today because it's his first time to Canada. He had a genuine misunderstanding of the work procedures here, and he was quite open and honest with me about why he was coming here. So this here is a notice of seizure, saying we temporarily seized your passport just for the night, OK? OK. It's not anything crazy. It just says that we're taking your passport. You'll get it back before you leave, obviously. OK. OK? Thank you. Okay, I'll show you to the exit, OK? A wrong turn landed this American in hot water with border officers. Out for a joyride, smoked a couple of marijuana joints and got lost and showed up at the border. She got a 24-hour suspension, took her vehicle back to our impound. Now, the two American friends who have come to drive her and her vehicle home have issues of their own. Due to the circumstances and conditions on this guy's probation, he was not allowed to have possession of firearms. Can you just come over here for a second? For me? Yeah. I'm yeah. just wondering why you have these pictures on your phone. It's a gun gallery thing, and you just go through them. And I like the pictures. Because there's a bunch of uh, target practice, obviously. Oh, Targets yeah, in the trunk. Go shooting. OK. Yeah, at the gun range. What kind of firearms do you have? We don't own them. We just we go and rent them, and then you know, we shoot guns. Both these guys have a criminal history, which means they're inadmissible to Canada. We're going to have to turn them around but they've learned the replacement driver has a DUI of his own and a suspended license, so he can't drive either. Do they not have a driver who can drive back? Well, one of them. Which one? The one that drove the car here. So they've got one driver and two cars. Exactly. Call the tow truck for her because um, she's unable to drive it until tomorrow morning. Making us go through this long period of time for absolutely no reason, I'm irritated. This is father dad. I'm not coming back to Canada. I have no reason to come back to Canada, none whatsoever. I've seen mooses before, so I'm good. In Toronto, a package from India has officers turning up their noses. 
This has got a bit of a smell, Marilyn. You can smell a lot of chemicals in it. A lot of narcotics are cut with harsh chemicals, acetone, gasoline. The declaration says ceremonial spools of fabric, but the x-ray says something else. The spools should be more hollow. You notice that there was more of an outline around the actual spools to the uh, thread, which is very unusual. Well, let's pull one out and check it out. Yeah. This looks like just paper rolled together. It's not of a high quality when you would get into store. They're not really properly packaged. They're all off-centered. But this one's very weird, actually. Should we just unravel it? Yeah, you unravel that one. I'm going to unravel one of these. Okay. Oh, yeah, look at that. Well, this actually has something on it. Yeah. So we have something, because this is not normal. In Toronto, a Canadian resident returning from South Asia claims he grabbed the wrong suitcase off the baggage carousel. What's in here? Oh, this is not my bag. He had a blue bag wrapped with green rope. This traveler's tale's a little too tall for the officer to believe. And I had said, are these your bags? And you said, yes. And I said, did you pack yeah, them yourself? And you said, yes, but it's not your bag. Not my bag. He swore that bag wasn't his, so he says his bag is the exact same as that. So we went out to the carousel and had a look. This one here. That should be it right there. And lo and behold, they did have another bag that was exactly the same. Well, cheers. Yeah. That's the first time I've ever seen that. I'm sorry for doubting you. OK, my man, back to number 13 there, please. I'll try this again, eh? The search reveals nothing. Proving once and for all, you can't judge a bag by its cover. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. Welcome back to Canada, right? It's pretty crazy that there's two bags the exact same on a flight with two entirely different people. Where do you buy a lime green rope in the first place? At Vancouver International Airport, officers pulled aside some nervous travelers from Asia. So there's eight dogs in total that the traveler has declared. Um, they're coming from Taiwan. Well, my wife and I are both dog lovers. Yeah. And then we saw a lot of stray dogs in Taiwan. Yeah. So with this organization, we just help them transport them here and so they can find a good home. Oh. If they didn't get transported, yeah. they get put down. Oh, yeah. Any dogs that you're bringing in for a rescue agency, what Customs looks for is we have to have all the paperwork to show that their health certificates are up to date, their rabies are up to date. Yeah, I've never seen them come through with uh, sweaters. Look at this guy. OK, so he'll finish up looking at the dogs. Okay. I'll get the paperwork started. Yeah, all eight dogs were admitted. All the health certificates were there. Uh, we visually inspected the dogs. They were healthy. Uh, they weren't transported in a humane fashion. Like, we usually check the cages as well to make sure they're big enough. So everything checked out, uh, all the paperwork. They paid the inspection fees, and yeah, they were on their way. At the land crossing. What is the nature of the goods? It's a uh, cable trays for uh, naval base. A Tennessee trucker and his canine companion, Biff, have been referred to secondary, so officers can take a closer look at their remodeled truck. I've never seen that. The trailer itself had a number of modifications, one in actually the belly of the trailer that probably could have fit up to four people inside. There's nothing illegal on the trailer, so officers shift their attention to the heavily modified cab. It is a strange model, and we find quite often with these, they do have a lot of interesting nooks and crannies inside. You got the cupboard under here? No, I haven't got anything under there. The whole back wall had been extended backwards, so it was about twice as long as what we normally see. There's about a foot back there, right? And in previous experience, that could be to create voids to hide contraband. More water. Yeah. There was absolutely no contraband inside the truck. And the load matched up perfectly fine to the paperwork. Uh, it matched the declaration that they had in our system. 
It's quite the cab. Yeah. I had to redo the whole inside when I bought it. Yeah. yeah. It had nasty right there. carpet in there. So everything was good. So he's on his way to Victoria. At the Toronto Mail Centre, officers have made a discovery by unravelling spools of thread from India. Yeah, this is not normal. It has to be some sort of narcotic. To be sure, officers perform a field test. It looks like it's positive. Yeah, we got a positive hit for uh, suspected heroin here. The substance is a narcotic. So we put the spools through the x-ray so we can confirm that every spool has suspected narcotics in it. That's definitive for sure. They're all consistent. I'd say they all have it. Very same. conclusive. It's, it looks like suspected heroin that we have here. On Border Security International. There is three talcum powders. That's not talcum powder. Do you have a firearm as well? Yes, sir. That would be the first time I've seen diapers and handguns mixed together. Are you coming to do any kind of work in Canada while you're here? You wouldn't lie to me, right? That's Border Security International.